All right, so in this chapter, we're going to just go over what we did for May's scalp for this uh, lesson. So let me just go into my channel box editor and let's turn off a few things so we can see exactly what was done. I will turn off my here system layer for a second and I will jump into perspective view. So we can examine this a little further. All right. So as you can see, the layout is relatively the same, or should I say, the technique is relatively the same from what we did for all of the other hair groups, except for I guess one major difference. All right. Let me just turn off. I think I should turn off a couple of other things because you can actually see the hair going into the woogie or wazzle. But I need to turn off a few other things here. So let's turn off additional elements so you can see this a little better. You can see the curves. Let me turn off the hair cap for a second so you can really see what's going on. Perfect. So as you can see, the hair starts from the front of the scalp and then goes right up into that area where the woogie or wuzzle is. Same thing for the back of her hair as well. All right, so we basically have two groups, one starting from the front, which is this one right here, all right, which starts from the front of the forehead and goes right into the woogie. And of course, there is the one from the back, which starts from the back of the head and goes into the woogie. So let's go through some of the settings that we applied here. So let me just turn off selection highlighting. And also let me just turn off NURBS curves so we can examine what our settings were. Okay, so all right, so let's go into clump and hair shape first. Now the hairs per clump, I went pretty high with this, although I don't think it really needs to be that high. I went with 110 as you can see, sub segments uh, 4. I guess I could have made it 100, but 110 is fine. Thinning at 0. Everything else was fine except for clump width at 0.3. And I made a hair width just a little larger at 0.018. The clump width scale, as you can see, is laid out this way to ensure that it keeps nice and thick. Here with scale, our selected values are at 1 and at 0.2. Alright, now clump width curl is at 0.5. Clump flatness, kept that at 0. Uh, let's go into collisions. We had our collide and self collide on, as you can see. Collision flag and self collision are at vertex. Collide strength at 1. Max self collide iterations are at 3. Everything else was pretty much the same except for friction at 1 and stickiness at 50. Static cling is at zero as well. Dynamic properties, well, we had a lot of differences. Stretch resistance, compression resistance, bend resistance, and twist resistance are all at 100. It's pretty high, but necessary for uh, the scalp. Extra bend links are at zero. Rest length scale, we kept at one. Stiffness scale, turn that up pretty high as well. Because when that hair is moving, especially where, as in, where it applies to the scalp, you don't want it moving around too much. Same thing for start curve attract. We turn it up pretty high at 50. Attraction scale is also at a value of 1. Bend model is still set to simple. Forces, mass at 10. Drag, uh, 0.05. Torrential drag at 0.1. Motion drag was at 0. Damp, pretty high, and stretch damp as well at 
10 and dynamic suite at 1. I think everything else from there was pretty much the same except for the shading. Of course, we made it black to match what we need for her. And of course, the ramp, as you can see, is laid out as in two nodes, one to the left at black, the one in the center at black, and of course, a gray scale at the right end. Pasty is also at 1. Whereas in translucence and pretty much everything else was literally the same. And of course we had cast shadows turned on. Yeah, and that was basically it. Once these values are applied, well, these are the most commonly used values that we have for the scalp anyway, for a character similar to this. Once you apply those values, everything should be relatively the same. And as you can see, this is the same hair cap that we use to sculpt, well, mostly sculpt the curls for the hair that we uh, currently have. So let me just turn everything back on right there so you can see it in its entirety. And yeah, that was pretty much it.